run away to the coast where the majority of Alawites are. And in doing so, um, basically disband the army and create a situation where um, the U.S. can come in to save the Alawites. And the only way to create a situation where you have to save the Alawites is to create the threat that's attacking them, which is to create terrorism. So um, I'd like to go to backwards now, but maybe 5,000 years ago, um, thereabouts, I don't know, 1,750 BC, and just to see how Iraq and Syria connected. Um, back then, in the olden days, uh, Syria and Iraq were separate entities, but then under the Assyrian Empire, they were connected as one state. Um, it's a very famous empire, it, it brought a lot of things um, to our society. And then under the Roman Empire, they were again considered Syria and Assyria, you know, separate states, but they, they always had some sort of connection between them. And the reason why this is significant is these people from 5,000 years ago, like the, the, the people, their history and ethnicity, they still exist today. And the considerations that existed way back then, they still exist today. I mean, the, the Armenians still exist, the Syrians certainly still exist. And all of the uh, battles that were happening 5,000 years ago are actually <laughs> affecting what's happening now. Um, and come, here comes uh, sykes uh When the Ottoman Empire fell, of course, uh, sorry, I just spelled sykes excuse me. But um, when the Ottoman Empire fell, uh, basically the French and the British divided the Middle East amongst each other. And um, the narrative is kind of pushed forward subtly in the media that Iraq and Syria are artificial nations because the borders were drawn up by sykes Pico. Well, in reality, um, the borders that were drawn up by sykes Pico were wrong only because they didn't encompass enough territory of the natural borders of Iraq and Syria. So um, the purpose that sykes Pico had in drawing up these borders is to try to, as much as possible, create landlocked nations. Um, Lebanon and Kuwait were basically created as a way to restrict Syria and Iraq access to the Mediterranean and Gulf Seas. Um, they were also designed to divide population centers from resource-rich areas. Kuwait holds a lot of petrol, and Lebanon holds a lot of water. So this is a way to kind of um, make sure that people stay in poverty. And of course, finally, they want to divide people along sectarian lines and keep them fighting with each other for centuries or decades to come. And um, Lebanon and Syria were exactly created under these religious sectarian lines. Um, you know, initially, in fact, Sykes people wanted to create even more divisions inside Syria. Um, but all sects of Syrian society, all religions, were against it. So if you look at the first map, um, that is, in fact, how the sykes Pico was meant to be drawn up. Um, the, uh, they were supposed to be an Alawite state over here, a Druze state. Damascus and Aleppo were supposed to be divided. But the only thing that they uh, achieved was the uh, region of Lebanon, because uh, of the Maronite population there. Um, they achieved that division. And they annexed this Turkish part, right here. And if you can just keep this in mind and compare it to the new sykes Pico, the um, new drawing up of the Middle East and the divisions that we want to create, you can see that it's very similar to um, the states that, well, they divided Lebanon, they divided um, Hatay. They want to go back and get their Alawite state and they want their Druze state as well. And with Iraq, you know, they want to divide Sunnis and Shias and Kurds. And the only thing really different about this map to the previous map, um, which I, I'm not going to risk going backwards, um, is that they have this Kurdish <coughs> section here. Um, so this Kurdish section wouldn't have existed back then in sykes Pico's time because the Kurdish population in Syria wasn't nearly as significant. The only reason it grew in Syria is um, because of the Armenian and Assyrian genocide and uh, the Kurdish uh, population's involvement and help of the Turkish government in doing that. And then subsequently, the uh, 
wars that were fought against Turkey, multiple wars that were fought by the Kurdish uprising against Turkey, to try to um, you know get their own independent state. And as a result of that, there were several influxes of refugees coming to Syrian territory, which um, continued up until the 50s. So um, this is something I'm going to talk about more deeply in my next talk. But the interesting thing is, um, this map here, the beginning map, is from the center um, so the Council of Foreign Relations. Much of these maps are drawn up by think tanks that uh, the Washington government basically replicates every advice that they're given by these think tanks. And as you can see, they wanted to create not only like, Kurdistan and other states, but something called a Sunnistan. And if you compare that to the borders of where ISIS is, you can see that ISIS is exactly the Sunnistan that they wanted to create. So in fact, ISIS has been essential to all of these plans. Um, because the Syrian war and the sectarianism that happened in the Syrian war would not have been possible without the Iraq war. It wouldn't have been possible without the introduction of violence and uh, weapons and militias and hatred between Shiites and Sunnis in Iran and Iraq, if not for the Iraq war. And the, the US at the time of the Iraq war, I, I remember the theme of the media was saying was that we need to prevent a civil war. And the US is like there to prevent a civil war. But as a matter of fact, they were acting to always undermine um, the unity of Iraq by introducing, for example, federalism into the constitution, um, for uh, removing a secular government and introducing a religiously leaning Shiite Dawa party, by disenfranchising uh, one sect and empowering another, and um, getting a mil uh, an army built from one sect to fight you know, um, cities that were resisting in another. Um, and also, they would even go down to, uh, well, I'll just say, you know, Saudi influence also funding these uh, groups. And finally, um, they would even stoop to creating false flag attacks. These two men are SAS uh, soldiers. They were caught by the Iraqi police, the pro-US government Iraqi police, caught them, dressed up as Arabs, shooting at them. And uh, this was a story that was quite hidden in the media because on that very same day, um, British tanks destroyed the entire police station to get these two men out. So you can see that they were already trying to um, get some uh, uh, sectarian attention to happen. So um, I'm going to rush. I hope I have time. So Syria and Iraq, you know, the, now the foreign policy papers are coming out with, do Syria and Iraq exist? Do they, you know, should we even consider they exist? And should we base our US policy on the idea that these sovereign nations that are um, seen as sovereign under the United Nations exist? Basically, they, they're saying that they no longer exist. And of course, the narrative is that <coughs> Saudi people got it wrong, and that's why there are wars. And by separating these nations under sects, this will be the end of wars. But in reality, the wars are happening because the imperialists want to implement Sykes-Picot as it was originally meant to be implemented, dividing people further. And you might ask, um, you know, why would that be? Well, of course, it's easier to control landlocked countries, it's uh, to make sure they're resource poor, to make sure they continuously fight alongside each other, and they want to uh, have a way to get their oil pipelines through without having to ask a government that uh, controls the land to, to get their pipelines through. Um, now, at the moment, the US is actually building illegal military bases in the north of Syria, and just but, you know, they've also got plans to invade from the south so they can connect their um, pipeline through. And, you know, speaking of these think tanks that are redrawing these maps and creating these maps of the Middle East, I believe um, Gondeliza Rice called it uh, the birth towns of a new Middle East. With what she meant was, you know, all the children that were dying in Iraq, that suffering was just the birth towns of the, you know, the new Middle East. All of that, you know, it actually is predated by the Israeli Audit Union Plan, which was written in 1982, which said explicitly that these nations should be divided under sectarian and ethnocentric lines so that they would be in perpetual war with each other and Israel could have the causes belly of expansion. And in fact, at the end of the day, a lot of it is about um, imperialism, yes, but there is this other agenda dri dri driven under the scenes of um, a greater Israel, of a um, creation of uh, expansion of Israel, um, 
driving populations are, um, you know, this, the land that is written in the Zionist handbook is that everything from the Nile to the Euphrates. And of course, the Kurdish borders that are being drawn up by these think tanks are everything beyond the Euphrates. And that's why you have Turkey coming into Syria with Operation Euphrates Shield. Because these borders and this chaos that's been happening has been planned a long time ago. Um, so the, the, the thing is, though, that these you know, redrawing maps might not be someone who's a nationalist, who might not care about borders. But in order to redraw these maps, ethnic cleansing has to take place. Because in order to create areas that are designated for different sectors of society, you have to get rid of the areas of, of, of the ethnicities that are already in certain areas. So, um, for example, to create uh, the Kurdish state right now, there uh, in Iraq and Syria, um, a, a Syrian minority is getting pushed out of their land by the Kurdish, uh, the, the U.S. supported Kurds, um, um, Yazidis, and ISIS has been like crucial to this. Because uh, whilst the um, Kurdish militias are well armed, the other ethnicities have no arms and no uh, training. And in fact, when they do arm themselves, um, the Kurdish militias uh, threaten them with uh, attack if they do not disarm. And once they disarm, uh, there has been recently, in fact, in Iraq, where the Peshmerga basically left uh, the Assyrians and the Yazidis to the devices of ISIS. So ISIS has been basically the enzyme that's built to create these um, states. And there's going to be more on that in my next presentation. But I'd like to finish off with a little bit of a, a counter statement, because these things are not set in stone. For example, really what they expected was for the Al-Qaeda to be too strong to overwhelm the Syrian military and to begin to do what they promised, which is to ethnically cleanse Christians and otherwise, and what they hoped was for Assad to run to the coast, and then therefore they would come in with a savior complex and uh, create an otherwise state, that hasn't succeeded. Because in fact, the people of Aleppo who were running away from the Al-Qaeda rebels, the majority of them are Sunni, and where did they run? They ran to the coast. So this is actually the opposite of the, the, uh, the ethnic division that they want to create. In fact, they achieve more of a unity inside the coast. Um, the only thing that they have been uh, moderately successful with is the creation of this Kurdish state. And now, Kurds are 1.5 million people in Syria out of a population of 22 million. So you can imagine, you know, one out of 22 trying to take over these swaths of land which are filled with oil and water. Um, so the thing, the counter narrative of that, however, is that Syria is planning to connect Palmyra, Deir Zor, and Kamishli, and thereby cutting off what would have been a sliced in half Syria. And the, that's probably the reason why the U.S. is conducting airstrikes on Deir Zor, the Syrian army location, because they, even though it's been under siege by us for so many years, they really um, want it to fall. Um, so this is what's happening now. I will talk more about the ethnic cleansing element of it and uh, more specifically about which uh, areas are being ethnically cleansed in my next talks. So I hope you will stay.